We've been talking a lot recently about the recovery in the Japanese equity markets, and uh, we've not really been at these levels now for more than 30 years. Yep, it's taken that long to get back to those levels we were at back in 1989. The big question is, have we got enough impetus for that final push to take us back up and tip us up over into record high territory? Well, let's take a look now at the technicals. And for this, we can turn now to a regular guest here at IGTV, Ron William from RW Advisory. Ron, welcome. Thank you. When we started talking about this, we, we contacted you because you are very much heavy into looking back to some of the uh, historical data and trying to work out where it steers us in the longer term. This is a really interesting story because, as I said, we've got to go back pretty much a generation uh, to when we started out in the financial markets, when the Japanese markets were up there. And of course, Bearings, of course, was one of the banks that suffered as a result of that at the time when the pullback happened and we didn't get that new higher high that uh, I know that the people at Bearings were hoping for. Um, what do you make of where we are and what's happening and the technicals behind it? Well, the big question is, uh, uh, Japan uh, year-to-date rise of 30%, will that eclipse uh, the old peak level of 1989, uh, th where Japan was really the zenith of, of uh, global market economies? Uh, two of my mentors, at least, uh, speak about markets back then and how the Imperial Palace is worth the same as the, the state of California, and how y your meal might be delayed in the restaurant because the chef might be trading the stocks. <laughs> uh, these are the anecdotal stories of the time. Uh, of course, there has been a three decade plus uh, bear trend, uh, uh, deflation, demo negative demographics and, and many other headwinds. But the follow up uh, point now is after a big rise uh, over the last few years, could this time be different? Uh, we're up 30 percent year to date. Um, and only 15% from the 1989 uh, peak level. So a good time to look at the charts. Well, let's take a look at the charts. And your first chart here gives us that long-term uh, perspective. Uh, as is always the thing with your charts, they're highly illustrative. And you've got a number of things going on here. But the main factor is, is that if you look to the left-hand side of the chart, you've got that 1989 peak and look at where we are at the moment. Describe more about what's going on under the covers. Yeah, so Bikovic speaks a thousand words, and, and certainly this one uh, more so. Uh, we have Japan's market rising from the ashes, that, that, that kind of sunrise uh, now eclipsing uh, the 89 uh, peak level. It was a base accumulation pattern. That's what we see there uh, from 2000 into 2015. That's how big the base was, or uh, 15 years or so. Uh, the old uh, turn of phrase is bigger, the bigger the base, the higher in space. And so the minimum price objective from that uh, decade long base um, is near the 36,000 mark. So that's still yet to come. Uh, but as you can see there, uh, it, it is almost like a straight line run. Uh, if you look at the price chart, uh, towards the right side of the scale, um, the, the indicator on the bottom in green uh, shows that this really was a straight line up. We had 10 consecutive weekly uh, rise, uh, 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 a rise in the market, uh, which has broken a decade-long uh, record. So all good, but too soon, uh, and ultimately overbought. Uh, with a potential buy and opportunity ahead um, as this market likely rolls over in the short term. Well, I think that's the point, isn't it? The fact that there are some technicals that are showing us that perhaps maybe we've gone a little bit too far too quickly. What should we be looking at to give us an indication as to perhaps maybe if there is a pullback where we should be entering? So great time when asking the question, how low could, can the market go in a short term correction context as part of a longer term trend is to uh, look at a, a range of different complementary indicators. Of course, an additional thing to do is look at you know, prior support levels, which we can do live on, on the IG platform. But beforehand, um, just to add further context, uh, the momentum study showing that we're overbought uh, demonstrating momentum divergences. That's the top right hand chart, figure two. Um, circle back to uh, the big chart, uh, time pattern projection based on uh, uh, cycle uh, analysis from the foundation study of cycles uh, projecting down that. So now we have price and time confirming on the way down. And we'll see that on the live screen in terms of the current rollover. And what's interesting, it's also a uh, price time 
confluence down from overbought conditions, but we can actually see um, that overheated FOMO condition in the bottom right hand uh, corner uh, based on ETF flows from uh, the BlackRock ETF on Japan, EWJ uh, is the ticker, uh, with the best weekly inflow in five years. And you can see this across other ETFs, I think JP Morgan um, and another, uh, where there is a, a record influx. Now, now that's good, it's healthy, but clearly it's also overheated for now uh, with potential unwind to come. And of course, this is interesting, isn't it, from a technical point of view, that FOMO, fear of missing out, you get that last big flurry, don't you, on the way up. Technically, you get that exhaustion and all of a sudden things just fall apart. Is that typical, what we're seeing at the moment in the Japanese markets to what we have learned in the classroom for technical analysis before? Yes, absolutely. So anything that moves too fast too soon uh, and, and acceleration becomes unsustainable in the short term leads to uh, uh, an overbought correction. What type of correction is, is where we have to then take a step back, look at the big picture as we did at the beginning to understand what stage of the cycle we're in. So if we're thinking about tech, um, that is very overbought and overvalued, uh, uh, likely a bigger correction and a bigger asymmetric risk there. In Japan, I would say less so. Uh, because it is coming from a rising base after three decades. Mm. Um, the target is still ahead at 36,000. And, and as we'll see on, on, the, um, uh, on, on other charts to follow, um, there is still further medium to long term uh, tailwinds ahead. Mm. Uh, but on the live chart, you, as you've just brought up on the screen there, uh, for, for those looking at this tactically and, 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 and whichever way you're looking at it, this is the best way to look at it now. Um, we can see overbought conditions there on the price chart confirmed by the momentum MACD indicator at the bottom crossing over just as we speak. Uh, and the likelihood is that we get a retest of that old glass ceiling at 30,000, which coincides with the prior peak levels. Um, and also, if you then look uh, low below that, the 200 day moving average is a overshoot risk. That's that red line here, isn't it? The wavy uh, red line. Absolutely. So that red line, uh, which is, I believe, below the 50 and 100, mm -hmm. uh, the green and the blue. Uh, so if, if you're looking for a, a maximum price objective based on those three moving averages, that would be the 200 day um, at 28,000 and change, 150, um, as a typical and healthy correction in, in a market that has been quite strong year to date, 30%. There's good reasons, I think, economically as to why people have not favoured Japan uh, over the last three decades. And there have been a lot of questions as to whether or not us here in the Western economies might actually suffer from the same problems about deflation. It doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon at the moment with the, with the current economic situation. But to what degree, fundamentally, are you persuaded by this argument? Where, I mean, fundamentally, what's happening at the moment in Japan that's different? that took the markets down from those peaks 30 odd years ago? So technically and behaviorally, there is a shift uh, and it's a generational shift, uh, three decades <laughs> of generational shifts. Um, so we can see that in the price chart in terms of the uh, accumulation base pattern that has ultimately lifted higher, bigger the base, higher in space. And, and that's happened. The halfway mark of the 1989 crash uh, which was uh, down to 7,000, um, was, uh, 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 I mean, not, not so long ago, some years mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. So we already passed that milestone. I, I would say what's changed now is that Japan is now outperforming other world markets. Mm. Uh, and so we do live in an industry that is bottom uh, line driven. Um, we do look for gains and, and many of my clients ask that as an opening question. Uh, what, what can we add to the portfolio to add alpha? And certainly Japan has not just added alpha, it's doubled, uh, its gains have is, is doubled versus SP 500. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just price gains. If you think about it from a macro perspective, how much risk have you taken on board to buy into Japan and lighten up on the US? And uh, well, the answer I think is it's 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 it's, it's a polar opposite because in the, in, the, in at, at least from a relative perspective, which is so you're saying there's still value even at these heady heights. Uh, it's still value from a fundamental basis, so valuations are much lower in comparison. So the chart in Figure Two shows that uh, valuations are currently one standard deviation from fair value um, and will likely unwind as the Japanese market does too. Uh, but it's very different from the US very different from uh, from Europe. Uh, but previously, it was all about a potential value trap. Now it's 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 probably cheap, um, attractive, uh, with more to follow, particularly where there has been change from the top in terms of governance. That's the second uh, piece uh, 
uh, of, of fundamental change, mm. uh, where there has been changes on, on, on a cultural level on, on, in terms of company boards, in terms of how they actually service their shareholders. Uh, that's reflected in, in buybacks and dividends. Warren Buffett himself is now attracted uh, to Japan and actually flown in um, and made headline news and he's buying the big five uh, Japanese stocks. So foreign investment is clearly strong. And we saw that, um, I mean, anecdotally with, with Warren Buffett, but also much broader in terms of ETF flow into uh, the likes of BlackRock now at five year highs. So that, that's, that's, uh, that's current existing demand. And, and there's many reasons. I would say number one, as I just mentioned, the bottom line performance uh, being stronger in Japan versus uh, other places which are probably overbought and overvalued and have greater macro risk in terms of potential uh, inflation, uh, much higher inflation, uh, growth down, slow down, uh, growth slowdown, mm -hmm. uh, geopolitical risk as well if you look at China. So that's one of the reasons why people are thinking, well, the China reopening hasn't really happened. Let's maybe look at Japan that, that where we can still uh, profit, but uh, at a better risk uh, premium. Also keep in mind uh, the bottom chart uh, in, on, the, on this chart mosaic, figure three, showing the, the tailwind which has supported the market. Uh, the BOJ, uh, through its uh, monetary policy, making their currency cheaper now at 32-year lows. This chart is inverted, by the way. It's, 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 it's yen versus the dollar, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, which is why you get the, the depreciation and the low. Um, but generally, it's been broad-based uh, yen weakness. And with a country that is an export driven economy, they, they, they naturally benefit from uh, buying more at, at cheaper uh, currency rates. Of course, one of, the, one of the reasons as to why this has happened, this Japanese yen has weakened so much, is the fact that the Bank of Japan is so very much behind Western central banks, which have been pushing up interest rates because of the high, the rise in inflation. We're now getting inflation pressures beginning to show themselves in the Japanese economy. That surely could be something potentially that might actually change the outlook if the Bank of Japan starts to raise interest rates. So that could well shift the focus a little bit. Is that what you're saying is going to add to the potential downward pressure for the Nikkei to give us those new lows to buy back in? What sort of price action is that going to develop if we see it, the Bank of Japan start to raise interest rates again? It's too early to, to, to tell. Uh, the price charts uh, will give us the, the, the most clearest signal. Um, and certainly it, right here and now, it would be a healthy correction, whatever happens. The two variables uh, macro wise that, that could change things is of course one, BOJ policy changing, and, and there is some concern about that and, and, and in terms of what that might bring, uh, but also the Japanese yen being so extraordinarily cheap right now, that won't continue for, for too long. Um, and according to my work, that could also change too. Either way, uh, I think this, this, the, the stock market technicals remain uh, first and foremost uh, uh, strong in, in that uptrend. Uh, the valuations are still relatively cheaper compared to other markets. Uh, and in terms of inflows, yes, there's an increase of, of foreign inflows, very little domestic. I think only 10% of uh, Japanese uh, locals invest in their own market. It's 30% Europe and 40% uh, uh, US. So, so if you believe in the Japan story and you see it as a relative attractive uh, play, uh, blue sky territory ahead um, above the 1989 peak, but uh, there will need to be a, a pause for now where the market corrects itself in order for it to resume higher. Uh, always good to look at you know, different scenarios, bull and bear, uh, but I would say this is probably the better of mm. the mix, uh, which is probably why it's gained so much uh, traction this year. Mm. Interesting story. Ron, thanks so much indeed for joining us. Uh, a quick um, roundup there of what's happening in Japan, uh, where we are, where we're going, and a potential pullback, uh, given the technicals, uh, giving us some sort of support below where we are at the moment, as Ron would say, uh, an opportunity then to get back in, possibly, possibly then to take us on to new all-time higher highs. Let's see what happens. And as Ron says, it's all about price action. That's Ron William from RW Advisory.